All right, tool groupies, got a call about 5.30 in the morning. They went in to fire up all their equipment to get started for the day, and one of their washing machines didn't work, and of course, I answered the call. I'm gonna take you with me. All right, so basically on this washer here, whenever you are running it, they said it would run through its cycle initially, and then, you know, it would kick off and everything, and whenever they opened up the door, you got the two buttons. You should be able to push them both to spin the tub. When you release the button, it should stop it. It should engage the brake. Now on this, the brake is this piece right here. All right, it goes over there to the gear reducer or the gearbox, you know, whatever people would prefer to call it. And it comes over to your motor here. Essentially, it's got a big balloon inside of this brake drum that will expand back and forth. And you got this big brake shoe right here. You got a brake shoe here, here, and on the other side which is operated by this air cylinder. Got a two separate brake system, and essentially that brake system will operate during its normal wash cycle, and it's got a secondary brake that will let you stop it when you're pushing those buttons. Now, all of this functions together simultaneously off of one thing on top of this washer. And they're like, well, we don't know what it is. We can't figure out what it is. This is what's called a centrifugal switch. Whenever it operates in the metrol cycle and it's running together, that switch right here on the inside, it's got brushes on some of them, it's got two little discs on the inside of it. It all operates together, sends signal through here, over here to this motor. And whenever it's running, it's running the same speed as this motor, because when it runs, it should be spinning that around. First thing I noticed whenever I opened up the door and tested it though, is that it's running. The gear reducer is running, but the back right here where the belts are onto the tub is not running. Right there is essential to those components because it should be running in sync together. It should send a signal together. If that's not operating right, and it's gonna cut out your motor. It's gonna make it to where your brakes don't work. So that's a dead giveaway. So we're gonna be taking this little box off right here and we're gonna see what the inside of this switch looks like. Now this is where all this wires into, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull this box off here and just check the wires on it just to make sure that nothing inside of there is all jammed up, burned up, anything could be causing us problems before we deal with anything else. Make sure your power's off, of course. Wires look good, we'll put a screw back in it. Now we're gonna focus on taking this one off. I'm just gonna take three screws out down here and uh, we'll see what she looks like back here. Well, the brushes do appear to be all right, but that don't mean that we ain't got some other kind of problem, or that we're losing voltage, or you know, things like that. So just had to had to test her out here, and see what we find out. Right now we're inside of the breaker boxes here. You can see them black ones back there. You got two black ones and then the yellow green strap one. That's what we're gonna be tracing. And you got them plugging into the little red wire that runs down through here and into this wiring harness. All right, now we're uh, checking a few different things before we start jumping into other stuff. You got these little relays right here that pulled them out and uh, you know, put one or two new ones in, switched a few of them around just to kind of verify things. You got your clutch, your high extract, your speed, all that kind of stuff runs in together on these relays. I'm going to test the voltage next to make sure everything's reading correctly. Process of elimination, that way we know everything's accurate here before we jump into all of that. Alright, now that we got our fluke meter here, we're going to go ahead and test the voltage. And there, you can see right there, ring number one is reading 120, number two is also reading. that part goes it's fine usually those little carbon brushes will burn out and you got to replace them or you'll need to clean the outside of those rings right there I have to replace the actual switch itself now the whole reason that I checked this first is I come straight into the factory you know they already told me some of the symptoms that was wrong with this thing so automatically assuming you know they said hey we think this is going on and you know because the motor's not running it was running the day before that whenever they were running it but it wasn't stopping like the brakes wasn't running and then today whenever i get there the thing ain't running at all i mean we had turned it on and i told them i was like push the buttons 
that way I can see. They were pushing the buttons. You had your wash motor, dump motor, and the gear reducer, all three running, but the back motor, the main extract motor on this, wasn't running. Some of these machines have a high-speed extract motor, low-speed extract motor, and one of the centrifugal switches. So the very first thing I wanted to test on this was the centrifugal switch. And then after I realized that it was perfectly fine, it was reading voltage and all that stuff, it was very minimum possibility that this is what the problem was. So part number two is go directly to the problem. The initial problem, which was the fact that it did not have brakes. This is your brake system. You got an air cylinder right here. It'll raise up and down. It'll lock down on top of this. The gearbox over there will spin. As you can see, this, this is loose, man. They've got this thing just jimmy rigged together. That is, uh, that's why stuff don't work right to begin with. All right, now, th this is supposed to be probably about one, one sixteenth of an inch apart. And as you can see right there, it's setting down on it from back here. And whenever it raises up, it should work in rotation with all these parts right here for that brake to lock in. And it's not because it's not even plugged up right here. I mean. And then there's that. Are you shitting me? Oh my God. They literally have duct taped the damn copper airline that is supposed to go into this right here. You see that, don't you? They duct taped the damn airline. Copper airline. See, now, now this right here is when we need ratcheting flare nut wrenches. You know, you run across them all the time and this type of work, and if anybody's going to put wrenches like that to use it's going to be people in the industrial field working on shit like this because that is a flat mess right there i got myself into a good one today it looks like that's what it is i mean they duct taped it instead of fixing it it looks like they poured glue over it or something yes upon further inspection they did put duct tape around it with some epoxy that that was their answer to plugging the airline kind of see right here I mean this this whole thing I mean it's coming off of the drum itself and it shouldn't be doing that there ain't no way it should be doing that the way it should be sitting on here it shouldn't be moving like this so somebody has jimmy rigged this thing together we'll fix it because that's what we do as you can see here the drum you got this drum right here and it runs down this bastard's gonna have to go in behind that one way or another kind of set in behind it here but as you can tell that ain't gonna work right there so what we gotta do is take this block here where you can see it a little bit better it's got a threaded hole right there that's supposed to turn around into a specific position but we're gonna take this fastener here completely out of it we're gonna thread it to this first then we're gonna put it back down this hole and then thread that one to it next because that's just the easiest way to get to this for this moment in time all right now as you can see that is the way it is supposed to be you got the fasteners in the big nut, the little jam nut, it goes all the way through here. It is secured, it is fastened down, got everything together. So now we're gonna check everything else, and give her a try. All right, now as you've seen from that video clip that we went through the process of elimination on the centrifugal switch and then we went over there and checked out the initial problem which was the brakes and come to find out the initial problem was something as simple as putting the damn fasteners back in place. They were unhooked and they didn't even check them and they could have done more damage than good but whatever they did to it caused this washer to quit running, to quit letting the tub itself run. So now we're going to have to do a few other things to do the process of elimination but check out the problem that we're looking at right here. The the front three motors are running but the extract motor is still not running all right here's problem number two the front is running but the rear motor and the tub is not the tub itself is not doing anything now we're going to check the contactors here all right that's motor motor that's the dump motor now this one should be the back motor that we're having problems with issue not turning all right i've checked all the fuses coming into it fuses are good got the proper amount of voltage it comes down to this second set of fuses here and it loops around it goes over to this contactor when we push it in you hear a large humming sound that is supposed to engage that motor up there now that motor should be sending a signal through that switch that we checked earlier it sounds like it's single phasing when you push it if you can hear this 
Ain't doing nothing but humming. All right, so far the voltage and everything was right on that, so we're gonna pull this cover off and make sure this bearing is not locked up on this thing. All right, now here's what the back half of the washer looks like, and we're basically gonna do this, make sure the tub can turn, because sometimes these bearings lock up here, whether it be the front or the back, you're gonna be able to tell it a little bit easier to pull them from the back. That might be why something happened. It's gonna send some signals to have the switch disengage, or it could potentially run, have the motor single phase, all that kind of stuff, transformer, you know, could create that kind of problem. So it's just like a process of elimination at this point. This should be free. But on the off chance that something is sticking on it, we'll just go ahead and cut the air off of it, go ahead and turn it completely off, and then it should spin freely from the back side. Okay, we're gonna start. We're gonna go ahead and take the cover off right here. That way we have better access to the top of the machine. All right, now we can finally get to the back shaft right here, and we can go straight up and get right on the motor if we need to. We're gonna pull these belts off, make sure that we can turn everything, and then we can access all the rest from right here, which will make this a lot easier to test out, just to verify that, you know, if there's a bad bearing in the tub, why we got it took apart, or to make sure the motor's spinning, because I'd much rather take the belts off and be able to turn this thing on to see if the motor will engage or if it won't this moment in time in the video i have already went and checked everything else we checked the fuses the relays the centrifugal switch and all that kind of stuff we got the brakes hooked back up and then we're going to verify that the bearings are not stuck and that the motor spins freely and i want to do that because sometimes if something's not functioning correctly or something's stuck on it it will send a signal to the centrifugal switch that will shut off everything now the reason that this washer is built this way it's kind of like a safety feature to keep you from tearing anything up burning the motor up stuff like that and it would send signals it does operate with different contactors and switches and stuff that will it will basically save you a whole lot of money in the long run and that's a pretty good thing but after i verified all this stuff and that everything seems to be running fine on it it had to be one of two different few things that i had left to check which is essentially checking the door sometimes the door switches on these things will get stuck and it will appear like the door is open and it has got a signal that is getting sent to it saying that the washer is running but the door is open and whenever it does that it shuts everything down so that it disengages the extract motor altogether it will not let it turn will not let it do anything anything now whenever they were running this washer initially they were trying to spin it around get the brakes to work the brakes was not working some kind of sensor in this washer picked up that the brakes wasn't running and that's what shut everything down it disengaged the motor that way it could not spin because in the case that you're sticking your hand in there pulling linen out of these washers you don't want this tub turning around on your it will cut your arms off so what this washer done was send those signals and disengage the motor completely and now that I got everything hooked up, I basically went around and I shut the door and I opened it back up. I made sure it had the proper amount of air pressure on it. I shut it again, turned it off, basically reset the computer, turned it back on and then started it. Now, once I started it, I had to turn it off the proper way, open up the door to where it would open up all the way. And then the washer was ready for you to turn it around. Now, as soon as I hit the button to turn it on, to turn it over, guess what? It turned over, it started functioning correctly. So the washer was now fixed. And just for a test, we had them turn it on, fill it up, run it through extract to stay there for an extra hour to make sure it would come out of extract perfectly fine. I've done a few more things to tinker with it. And of course, this washer's fixed. All right, as you can see, got it fixed up and running. The motor is running, it's good. You can see the brakes right there. The brake shoes are setting up off of it the way it should be on the drum. So uh, now I told them to load it up run it let's make sure everything's good and fixed i'm gonna do a few more minute repairs to it and then this job is done for the day but now if you want to see some real tools in action doing real world repairs like my brand new sun x wrench here all you gotta do is pop the clutch on that subscribe button follow on instagram or check out my new facebook page